Welcome to LC Sciences webinar. Today's topic is Decretone Sequencing for Plant microRNA Target Identification. My name is Chizu. I'm a senior scientist at LC Sciences. So today we are going to talking about the first microRNA in plants, then target identification method. Then we will emphasize a new method to do the target identification, that is decretone sequencing. And we will give uh, some case studies, and later we can do the Q uh, question and answer section. So what do we know about the microRNA? So we already know all microRNAs are small non-coding RNAs. Usually they consist they consist of 20 to 22 nucleotides for animals and 20 to 24 nucleotides, a little bit longer for plants. And we also know there are some other small non-coding RNAs, for example, pi RNAs. All microRNA precursors have a well predicted steam loop helping structure. And this helps us to do the uh, novel prediction uh, microRNA based on our sequencing data. And we also know this helping structure has low free energy. Many microRNAs are evolutionary conserved. We can find the microRNA from worm to human, from ferns to corn, Educodes or other species in plants. Binding to complementary messenger RNA molecules is their mechanism, fundamental mechanism of microRNA, and they normally act as a negative regulator, the regulators of a translation. And they are present in high copy numbers and also they are tissue-specific. And this microRNA is function in, a, in one sentence that they are regulate messenger RNA translation to protein. So they are very important. So MioBase is a very popular database connect, connecting, connecting uh, no microRNAs. Starting from April 2005, MioBase released version 6.5.1 and it contained, contained about 2,000 microRNA entries. After April 2008, the first release of an Illumina small RNA sample preparation kit. Then people began to use a sequencing platform to do the microRNA discovery and the novel microRNA prediction. After that, it really boosted up the microRNA interest in the mere base. On the version 19 of the MIA base, published on August 2012, it has 21,264 MIA base entries, which is connected from 193 plant, animal, and virus species. That's about 1,000 times more than the first uh, uh, version, first uh, published uh, version 6.1 near base. So what function in plants? As in animals, the microRNA regulate, also regulate plant development and also involve in signal transduction. 
in the very important for plant microRNAs also are involved in plant disease and resistance. Specifically in plant microRNAs are also involved in environmental stress response. And uh, microRNA also regulates microRNA itself and the small interference RNA biogenesis and function. So as, as the authors said in Cell 2009 paper, the microRNA is playing a very is playing a very important role in plant almost all functions and almost everywhere in plant. So why we study microRNA? Certainly we want to do the basic research and discovery, try to identify novel microRNAs in various plant species and also the specific tissues in one plant and uh, understand their mechanism of action and the regulatory roles. And uh, also, we try to understand how plant responds to all kinds of stress and what kind of essential roles in plant growth, development, and certainly strength response and try to get the microRNA biomarkers involved in all kinds of this essential roles. And uh, study microRNA, study microRNA also help us to do the plant breeding. We want to try to find the good breeds for our research, for our food, and for our needs. So how microRNA plays their roles in plant and what kind of mechanism they are using. So now we are quite quite sure that uh, in the plant they have some specific uh, uh, specific roles and they unlike animals the microRNA normally is near perfect complementary to target messenger RNA. Upon bonding, bending to their targets, the microRNA are not play as uh, a single as a single. They are play as a unit with a couple of uh, proteins. The the unit normally is called riscus. And their function is as uh, endonucleus. They will cleave messenger RNA in the middle. And the cleavage, we now we know they are precisely guided between the 10th and the 11th nucleotide in the microRNA side. I mean, the 10th and the 11th is based on the length, I mean the position of the microRNAs. And they will cut at this region at the messenger RNA binding place. And from this plot, we know that the precursor microRNA is expressed in the microRNA gene, or oh, sorry, is transcribed from microRNA gene, and then they process to the double strand uh, small RNA, and uh, after that, only one strand will incorporated to the risks, and another strand will be cleaved, and uh, they are transported, I mean, microRNA precursor is transported to the, um, to outside, the, transported outside the nucleus, nucleus, nuclear. 
and then they will form complementary to the messenger A. And this messenger A will be the target of the risks and they will be cleaved by the risks to two parts, upstream and downstream. On their downstream, they keep the phosphate on it. That's very important for our following protocol of the dequitone sequencing. So this is what we currently know about the, the micron A uh, mechanism. And it is first published, I mean, reviewed in the 2004 current op opening plant microbiology. So we also know that the microRNA implant is not one to one. They are in the network. They are target. They will one microRNA may have multiple targets like a meal 156. They have uh, at least three targets, and also we know that the uh, One target micron A may have several micron A's as their regulators. So they are really in a network, complex network. So we know that a single micron A may have several target gene and a single gene may be regulated by many micron A's. And the identification of this microRNA target pairs is very important, crucial to understanding the biology of the microRNA regulatory mechanism. So, how we can apply sequencing to microRNA research work? The sequencing normally can Containing three important parts, or maybe protocols, steps. The first, we want to have the microRNA prepared as a cDNA library ready for sequencing. And then we use a different sequencing platform, NGS, Next Generation Sequencing Platform, to do the sequencing on this library. And uh, most important, we need to do the data anal analysis on the sequencing data. For example, we do the data analysis according to this flow chart. And we use our in-house build program, it's called ACGT101 package to do the data analysis. So first, we get the road sequencing data from Illumina platform, sequencing platform. And uh, we get about the 4 million reads of the remove the adapter only sequence and some no low complicity reads. And then we remove the low copy number, which is less than three copies in the sequencing. And also remove the short lengths and the large, I mean long reads, which is not falling to microRNA lens criteria. So we remo remove reads smaller then 15 and the larger than 26. After that, we get like 3.7 linear reads of the passing these filters. And then we mapping, we map this read to different database, especially the MIR 
meet Micron A meal based database. And we want to identify what are the no Micron A in our sequencing data. And the MMAP, MMAP the reads, which is not mapped to the meal based database or other Micron A database, will map to Messenger A database like a RAPSeq or RNA family database or RAP base. We try to remove that that reads coming from other sources of RNA or maybe ribosomal RNA or messenger RNA or tRNAs. And then after that we map all the mapped and uh, all other unknown small RNA sequences reads sequence reads to genome and after that we can identify what are the known microRNA, what are the microRNA map to other no micron A, maybe it's not from their own species, and also we will know what small RNA or predict the micron A can form helping and also can map to their genomes. So this one, this group 3 and 4, also including group 2, will become a predict microRNA for this specific species. Then after data analysis, we eventually know what are no microRNA from the reads from this sample and what are predict microRNAs and also what are other RNAs from the sample. And uh, how we can de de define the microRNA target? So there were several ways to do so. First, and the simplest, not involved any experiments, experiments. They are the bioinformatics method. They just do in silicon prediction. And the other is low throughput one is the RT-PCR. And uh, also we can use the Western plot to find the uh, from the from to to form the uh, unit and from the uh, protein method, use this protein method to identify the microRNA. And also we have another no throughput method. It's called the Lucy Ferris reporter assays. And uh, another sequencing method is called the RAP5 primer rapid amplification of a CDNA ends. And uh, the last one and uh, last one and also an important next generation sequencing method is called the Decreton sequencing. They are fundamentally use the similar method as for the number five method, the race method, and but they are high throughput. And the four bioinformatics method, we have a few pores to do so, but all these have a similar drawbacks that uh, are those are they still requires experimental confirmation and normally they have a, a lot of false positive and false negative even you are using different tools you may get quite different result even for one prediction one sample prediction for one sample and uh, QPCR and the Western plot 
they are not use uh, they are, they will not distinguish between direct and secondary macro target and the uh, luciferous reporters say it's really labor intensive and they depend upon the region chosen for cloning and there can be sensitivity to variance in protocols such as the method of transfection and uh, the five prime rapid amplification of a sting ends risk analysis they require very no information and they are also gene specific that also gene specific and the decrement sequencing is a next generation sequencing method they they are a modified five uh, five rapid amplification of a CDN and method and uh, the they the method is based on the understanding that the uh, implant microRNA tend to cause the cleavage of their target at the position between nucleotide 10 and 11 of the microRNA and uh, technical sequencing really really don't need any background knowledge. They also provide a comprehensive means of analyzing, analyzing, analyzing patterns of RNA degradation. degradation. And uh, the, matter, the, the matter is using next generation sequencing to identify the five prime end of RNA degradation product. And then they allow identification of an overrepresented five prime end, which is caused by the microRNA cleavage. And the matching cleavage side to the no microRNA can also identify the target, the messenger RNA target, and also link messenger RNA target to the microRNAs also get the information from the microRNA. So decreton sequencing is demonstrated in many published studies which use our sequencing service, decreton sequencing service. This, uh, especially in 2012, there's a few paper published on BMC plant biology and the BMC genomics and the plant cell physiologies, physiology and the physiology plan. This uh, plus one and also molecular biotechnology. And uh, our customer will always recommend our customer to use uh, Norgen Biotech uh, Total RNA Extraction Kit for plant. This, we test this kit. They are quite uh, good and, uh, and we recommend our customer to use it. And certainly use this kit. We also need to do the QC and we try to get the good total RNA which is which is uh, the ratio rich ratio of uh, 260 to 230 should be larger than 1 and 260 to 280 should be more than 1.8 and uh, we can also use the bananizer to do the bananizer uh, agenous bananizer QC to to demonstrate the total RNA's quantity. And after uh, we got the we get the plant total RNA, we will use the oligo DT magnetic beads to put on the poly A containing messenger RNA. Supposed to be messenger RNA. And uh, as we mentioned before in the mechanism of microRNA regulatory 
and uh, the of the endonucleus cleavage, the micro microRNA guided cleavage on the messenger RNA will leave three prime end strand with uh, five prime phosphate. Use this phosphate, we can do the ligation and uh, put the five prime end, five prime adapter to this strand with phosphate on the five prime end. And after that, we will use a random prime primer to do the reverse transcripts. Then it will generate small fragments, CDR, cDNA fragments with uh, five primer adapter and the three primer adapters. These adapters containing universal primers. So we can use universal primers to do the PCR to get the small cDNA fragments, which lens supposed to be 260 including primer region of the gel purification and the quantifications of this library. Quantification of this library, we can do the Illumina sequencing. And now, for this uh, modified method, decadent sequencing only required 10 microgram total RNAs, and we use uh, gel or beads based purification method to do the uh, library purification. And uh, we only use uh, 12 to 15 cycles PCR and try to minimize the PCR bias. And uh, we only do one job purification, that's at the cDNA PCR product step. And uh, we sequence lens is 36 nucleotide. And uh, there's no, should be no adapter contamination in the sequencing reads. And uh, the experimental time will be only one day and uh, they are easily compatible with the Illumina sequencing platform. So the flow chart for the diagonal sequencing will be first sample preparation. After that, we will do the cluster generation and the propel the template coped flow cells and ready for sequencing. And after the sequencing and the base call, we will do the data analysis. And the quality of the sequencing read normally should be above Q30. That means one arrow, sequence arrow, in one sound basis. And we are currently use the Illumina GA2X as the instrument for sequencing. The reading lens, sequencing lens, are 35 nucleotides. And uh, for one sequencing name, we get 20 to 30 million reads. And the data, the whole data is 1.7 to 1 gig basis. And we can also do the multiplexing on one name, but we recommend only one to two samples per name. And the maximum number is three. It's really based on the coverage of the data. 
and the total number of reads will not change the bar, not change with the bar coding. That means three sample will share with this uh, 20 to 30 million reads. So that means if we multiply three samples together in one sequencing name, that will be 10 million reads, average 10 million reads per sample. So the worries is that was that uh, if we multiply some more data, we will get less coverage for per sample. Then that's the reason why we don't recommend to do too many samples in one sequencing name. So for the decaton sequencing, we do have a uh, several tools available online. There will there are several here list, and we are currently use Cleveland from PSU. And uh, first, after the decaton sequencing, we get the sequencing tags, that's the sequencing reads from the cleaved messenger RNA, decorated messenger RNA. And then, based on the messenger RNA database, we identify what are this tag, sequencing tag, come from, and also what are they, their copy numbers. So then, we know what are the dichrotom density. That's including two kinds of information. It's what are this messenger RNA cleaved by the microRNA, and what are their abundance. And uh, with the sequencing data and with the microRNA information, either from MioBase or from the sequencing, microRNA sequencing, as we discussed, discussed before, then we can do a target prediction because we already know that the microRNA are nearly perfect, nearly perfect, perfect match to the messenger RNA, complementary match to the messenger RNA. So based on the sequencing tag, we know what are the target, which is messenger RNA, and we also know what are the microRNA involved. Then with all this information, we can have a high fidelity microRNA target profiled. And uh, as I mentioned, we use a Cleveland, Cleveland pipeline to do the data analysis. At, this, at the meantime, we also develop our in-house scripts, try to link all this uh, uh, data analysis tools together and give a clear report for our customers. For, for example, we do the data analysis of the sequencing reads from the Illumina based calling and they map the dichrotone reads to the uh, transcriptome, I mean RefSeq or other messenger RNA database. And then we summarize the dichrotone density file based on the messenger RNA sequencing data from dichrotone sequencing. And then based on the mere base and the small RNA sequencing data, we generate small RNA and the messenger RNA prediction. Target pairs. And then we compare the dichrotone density file to the target prediction and uh, output the significant hits. That means uh, we pair messenger RNA to the microRNA and make, uh, make microRNA and their, their target pair. And then we generate the T plots of the target to try to see which one is a significant uh, 
meaningful from the data analysis. So this is a decadent sequencing data. And uh, after the sequencing, we link this target messenger RNA to the small RNA. For example, this is the data for the arabidopsis. The microRNA ID is listed here, and the messenger RNA target is listed here. And we give the alignment score based on the mapping and the target prediction. And we also give the alignment range, says uh, what kind of uh, sequencing reads we read, we have from at the messenger RNA side. And uh, based on the, uh, at, on the sequence data, we know the cleavage side, and we also give a category based on the data analysis and the p-value. And uh, we also give uh, exactly how many row reads found from the decadent sequencing and before normalization and also the number after normalization. And also we will also give the orientation of this messenger RNA. This is a very, very comprehensive uh, data, data list, data table for the decadent sequencing, including messenger RNA decadent sequencing data and also talk microRNA information. And uh, just as I mentioned a moment ago, there's a prediction category. So for example, this one, we show microRNA ID and also the messenger RNA ID, and we give the location of the cleavage. And uh, we give the score, alignment score, and we also give the category number to, to show, and also p-value to show what the uh, statistic numbers are, p-value are. And uh, the list, uh, the, the uh, y-x is showing the row reads or normalized reads here. The x is showing the exactly position of the cleavage. And uh, we identify this uh, cleavage side and also show other cleavage side on this messenger RNA. Maybe this messenger RNA is caused by unknown microRNAs or maybe by other by other mechanism. But based on the no microRNA information, we identify the uh, microRNA target on the messenger RNA, the exactly position of the cleavage site of uh, the microRNA MIO-156B on, uh, on this messenger RNA. So this is the plot we show for each microRNA and the messenger RNA target pair. And uh, what are these category of the identification, target identification? The category zero is that uh, target identified is uh, the highest abundance showing in the sequencing reads on this location, messenger RNA. And uh, category one is that the two equal maximum reads are found at the two locations, but the one was identified as a, a microRNA messenger RNA pair. And uh, the category two is that the identified target 
messenger I read, Dequinton read, are not maximum reads on this messenger I, but they have the higher abundance than average. The category through three is that uh, this position is identified, but uh, they are the reads, the sequencing reads are less than the average of other locations, other reads. And the category four is less likely to be the true one because only one read was found for this position as uh, identified the microRNA and the messenger RNA pair. So now we, we go through the diagnostic sequencing method and uh, we are going to provide a few case studies here. So this paper is published in 2012 on journal BMC Plant Biology. And uh, this one we help the customer to identify the microRNAs first. We identify 97 microRNAs as no microRNAs and also identify 31 novel microRNAs. And, uh, and the further 49P3 or P5, that means uh, 3 prime end or 5 prime end strand of the now no microRNAs. They are not identical to the mere base, but they are from the same precursor, but a different strand. And after identify this no and the pre nova no and the nova microRNAs, we did a decadent sequencing and uh, try to get the target of uh, this no and the predict microRNAs. For example, here. So based on the diagonal sequence, we know exactly we know exactly cleavage site of the microRNA risk unit on the messenger RNA. And uh, but this protein messenger RNA its function is unknown. And also, another one, we know exactly the position, and uh, even they have two most abundant reads on this gene, on this messenger RNA, but we can identify one is regulated by the predict novel microRNA from these studies. And also, another predict novel microRNA also get the target pair, my macron and target pair. And this is a no function as a TCP family transcription factor. And this is a CCAAT binding transcription factor. And this is a lipase. So from the macron A sequencing and the diacritin sequencing, we dig out the information of the microRNA and also its target and we know exactly the regulatory cleavage site from this study. And finally, we give another example too which is on the oil seed rib. And this one, we identify 41 conserved microRNAs for the oil seed rib. And uh, 68, 62 novel candidates for the uh, specific microRNAs. Because this one don't have microRNA list in a mere base. We found out conserved, which is also being 
reported or no microRNA from other species, but they share the same sequence for as for OERC rip. And after identifying the no conserved microRNA or candidates, we further did a diagonal sequence. We identified total 33 non-rebundant target EST for 25 conserved microRNA and 19 non-rebundant target ESTs for 17 OER seed specific microRNAs. So the diagonal sequence sequencing is very good method to identify microRNA and uh, their target, their target messenger RNA cleavage site, also known the cleavage site. So our company started providing service from 2005 and uh, providing sequence service. Previously, we provide the micro, micro array service starting from 2005 and uh, provide a sequencing visor on 2008. And uh, we have our headquarters in Houston, Texas, USA, and uh, we also have our office in China and uh, we have uh, our sales representative in Japan, Korea, and India. And uh, we totally have uh, 15 processed, uh, 15,000 samples for both the macro-array and the sequencing. And our macro-array platform is quite a customized table, customizable. Uh, platform, which is called the uh, micro paraflow microflodic technology. This is our own platform. And uh, we totally have a customer from 1,400 institutions from 40 countries. And uh, right now, we have totally, we totally we have a total 600 customer publications. And we have an excellent reputation in marketplace, both in macro array platform and sequencing platform using. And we have worldwide sales. And this is the list with the, the plant we processed the sample from this species. And uh, we have a headquarters at the Houston, in Houston, and we have a different uh, sales representative, and also we have an uh, office in China. So thank you for attending our webinars, and uh, also if you have any question, please feel free to contact our service at uh, lcsciences.com. Thank you very much.